So while in Cleveland, I wanted to check out the Lakeview Cemetery. There's a lot of famous people who are buried here. And it's also just a beautiful cemetery to walk around if that's your thing. Uh, but this is James Garfield's memorial here, beautiful memorial. Garfield was the 20th US president and one of four presidents to be assassinated. Abraham Lincoln, William McKinley, John F. Kennedy, and Mr. James A. Garfield. Garfield was a pretty interesting guy. I mean, he, he was a Civil War general. He served nine terms in the House of Representatives. Uh, he wasn't even planning to be president, believe it or not, but he was viewed as the compromise between the two who were running. And people said, oh, we want you to be president, and kind of went off from there. But he was only president for like four months um, before he was shot. And he died September 19th, 1881, at 49 years old, of massive infection and pneumonia uh, 79 days after he was shot. Look at these Death Eaters. I don't know what you would call them. They look creepy. That's amazing looking. All right, here's another uh, surprise to me. John D. Rockefeller is buried here. I don't know where I would think he would be buried, but I'm surprised that he's buried here, I guess. I don't know. Oh, okay, so this is the family plot. That's why. Alice Rockefeller died 13 months yeah see Marianne Rockefeller wife of W.G. Rudd so that's why all the Rudds are here because it was a family yep Lucy so this is her own family this is Lucy Rockefeller wife of P.D. Briggs Willie Briggs I don't know who P.D. Briggs is, but he's not here. And then just says baby lived just a couple weeks. This is strange. Everything is um, fenced in and uh, has a bunch of graves. It says Garfield. So I don't know. I don't know what this is. It's like a separate little area and they obviously don't want people in here. Very strange. All right, coming up to the main event here. This is the Angel of Death, Victorious. This is said to uh, cry. has a rot. The whole family is here. Right next to the angel of death is this. It looks like beds. I wonder if this one is smaller because he was younger. Let me see what the. No, lived a long life. 1902 to 1981. 
So I don't know. Maybe it's just the way that people have trampled it on it or something. Barbara Ann. This one is this uh, this woman is still alive. But look at this. Does that mean the three cats are buried here? <laughs> That's pretty clever. I like that. So they'll be waiting for her when she gets here. Coming up to Alan Freed. Rock and Roll was born in Cleveland when Ohio native and radio disc jockey Alan Freed coined the phrase in 1951. Rock and Roll. And look at this. Of course it would be a jukebox. Still have to go there, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There's probably a lot more known people, famous people that are buried here, but um, it's starting to get dark, so I'm going as fast as I can trying to locate who's here. And this interesting looking grave uh, with all the pens, this is Harvey P. Carr, uh, basically an underground writer. He was a critic, pretty much anti-establishment. If you don't know him, look up Letterman P. Carr on-air implosion. Um, it's an interesting video when he was on Letterman back in the 80s. And um, really one of the only f very few people to actually visibly make Letterman angry. Yet another well-known name in this cemetery is Elliot Ness an American prohibition agent who was really famous for bringing down Al Capone during the prohibition era in uh, Chicago. And he ended up working here in Cleveland as the safety director in the 1930s. In 1956, Ness moved to Pennsylvania to manage the Guarantee Paper and Fidelity Company. But just one year later, he died of a heart attack in his home. And someone left him a little bit of uh, a little drink here in case he's thirsty. But uh, certainly has a legacy that he left behind. Sergei Gerenko. Yeah, that's really, that's beautiful. Spent some money on that one. It's just kind of busy here right on the water. Just let everybody wants their loved one to enjoy the pond here. It's pretty nice. Kind of see the casket on either side. It's hard because you got to have the camera directly against the glass, but you get the idea. It looked like the tree had fallen down on some of them, but this is just very old. I wish there was a date. Some of them have the dates on them. Kinney. Now there's definitely something in this cemetery that I have never seen before and it's right smack in the center and that is a giant dam. Literally there's graves and little mausoleums and everything all around here and here's this big dam. Big damn dam. Look at that skate spot if you're into skateboarding. Just wanted to see what the dam looks like here. That's it. Kind of cool.
coming up to an interesting grave, another interesting grave. Ray J. Chapman, he played for the Cleveland Indians. He actually died while playing baseball. Um, his grave is around here somewhere. Ray Johnson Chapman, he played for the Indians from 1912 to 1920. He played shortstop. Uh, he actually led the league in sacrifice hits, 67 in 1917. Uh, the same year, 55 stolen bases. But in 1920, Chapman was hit in the head by a pitch by a Yankee pitcher named Carl Mays. He died some 12 hours later. He's the only player to this day, I believe, to die directly from an injury during a major league game. Now, back then, it was pretty common for pitchers to dirty the ball up. I guess they called them spitballs. They used dirt or tobacco spit to get some grip on the ball, and they didn't switch the balls out. So they would be playing with a, a brown ball, a dirty ball, and it sometimes made it hard to see. But that was stopped after the season in 1920. And also Chapman's death helped argue the need for the helmets, for batting helmets. Although that rule took another 30 years. Total it, we got locked in the cemetery. So I'm sure my buddy Lamont has experienced this before, being locked in the cemetery. Uh, you know, you gotta love it. it. To me, locking gates when people are still in the cemetery is like locking the doors to a store and going home when people are still in the store. It's kind of ridiculous. So I've driven around, there's a couple gates, but uh, they're all completely locked up tight. So I ended up calling the Cleveland area police department and uh, I guess they're supposed to send somebody out to unlock the gate. I'm hearing sirens in the distance. Now we are in Cleveland, so I don't know what that means, but I really hope they're not for somebody just calling saying they're locked in a cemetery. Yeah. So they say close is 5.30 p.m., but it's like eight something, and an hour ago there was a lot of people in here. So, I don't know. I'll keep you up there. <laughs> All right, never mind. And actually, I just looked it up. As of April 1st, the gates are supposed to close at 7.30. So I know that sign said something like 5 or whatever, but... 7.30, so, I mean, we're only talking about a very small amount of time between the time that it closes and the time that I'm pulled up here trying to leave. So it's not like I'm trying to leave hours after this place closes. It's kind of crazy. They don't, I mean, how many roads could there possibly be in this cemetery? They, nobody could just take a quick drive around and say, hey, we're, you know, you're still here, get out. I mean, there's thousands of graves here. So the possibility that family member might be here is kind of kind of strong all right cop showed up just out of his car now I don't know what he's doing Does he have the key yes unlocking the door How often Sorry do you about have to that. Do this? Oh, you're fine. No yeah, one, no one. A lot. Okay, I was like, oh no. I wish that they would have some. I mean, something that says like we close the gates. You know? Yeah, yeah they close like right on time too. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. I'm like, go back to that one. I'm like, no wait, it's this one. I'm like, I don't know what yeah. to do. Yeah, it's All a right. big cemetery too. It's yeah. amazing. So, Thank you very much. <laughs> He was cool, he says it happens all the time, and I'm sure it does. All right, so there you go, the Lakeview Cemetery. Very pretty cemetery, just do not be here after hours. They, uh, the, the, the cop said, 
they close right on the hour when they close. It's, I don't know. I've been to at least 150 cemeteries over the last 20 years, and I've never had that happen. But I'll be aware of it now. All right. See you in the next video.